Because the truth is that most people have enough money. They're just worried they don't or they're not confident they're doing the right things with it. So once you start feeling better and start focusing on the money you have rather than the money you wish you had that you don't have, that helps you then start to shift your mindset and the unconscious beliefs and stories. And then that makes it easier to actually sit down and you know sort out your banking and sort out the way you manage that flow of money as it comes in. Welcome to Personal Finance Cat, where I share my personal take on personal finance. Hi, Miriam, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm excited to have a chat with you. Yeah, likewise. I love your background. Before this, you were just talking about yoga and you said that you have been practicing for 25 years and it's been very beneficial. Can you talk about that a little bit? How has it been beneficial for your business, personal, spiritual aspects of your life? Yeah, so um, I, to sort of give the bigger picture, I take Tuesdays off and I go to yoga and that's really by design. Because what I find is that when we get ourselves into, you know, a stress response where we're going, oh, my God, there's so much to do and we start thinking and worrying about things, we're actually, you know, working against just allowing things to flow and we don't think clearly anymore. So yoga to me is, you know, I call it my Teflon for the brain. I go for an hour and a half. When I walk out, I'm like, I don't have anything to worry about. It's all good. And then, you know, you just think more clearly. So really, as much, much as it's a physical practice, it's actually hugely beneficial for, um, you know, um, for the mind. It's amazing. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I guess there must be some connection between your practicing yoga and your focus on mindset. Because I think based on your bio, you talk about money mindset and wealth mindset. Can you elaborate on the distinction between money mindset and wealth mindset? Oh, yes, I would love to, because there is a big difference and people just bang on and on about, I have to have a good money mindset, good money mindset. And really, that's um, code for, I've got to try to be really positive about the income I'm trying to generate this month. I mainly deal with small business owners. And so, you know, often they are the business to a large extent. And so money mindset is often a very short-term focus and it's focused on income. But generating income, you know, while it's great, it keeps the wheels turning and the bills paid, it doesn't actually give you that bigger goal and, um, you know, those larger desires that people have of creating wealth and, pardon me, flexibility and that freedom, you know, that drives us to start our own business or start a side hustle like so many people. So wealth mindset is really about staying connected to the bigger picture and already starting to see yourself as a wealthy person rather than just somebody who can bring in enough money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for the listeners who don't necessarily know the difference between what you were talking about, the money or the cash coming in from the business versus wealth, can you explain that a little bit? What's the difference between somebody's, let's say, cash flow or income versus their wealth? I think shorthand is wealth gives you options and choices. So, for example, my husband was diagnosed with stage four cancer a couple of years ago, and I had the freedom and the option to just step away from my business, let the income drop significantly, like I think I dropped about $150,000 in income for the year, but it didn't affect our lifestyle and I had the option and the choice to do that. So that's wealth. That's having financial security and stability that can see you through whatever life throws at you so that you have the choice and you have the options. Whereas income is really about, you know, just paying the bills, keeping the money rolling in because it needs to be spent. So yeah, it's a, it's a really big difference. And in terms of mindset, I think unless somebody pulls you up, a lot of people will miss that difference and yeah, and it's, it's massive, it's huge, and over time it really makes a difference because you can earn lots of money but still not have that freedom and that financial stability. Yeah. So how do you help your clients with that? How do you help your clients build wealth while still being able to earn the money that they need to spend? 
So I run a group coaching program because it's all about actually learning to shift your own mindset and learning the practices that allow you to use your money and the income that comes in to build wealth. So the way we do it is we start first with um, energetic alignment, which I know sounds a little bit woo-woo. I'm originally an engineer. And I used to work in corporate development. And it took me a really long time to understand that absolutely we create our reality because our beliefs, our thoughts, our words, our, our actions all have an effect, right? So that's really what it's about. So it's like, is how I'm approaching life actually in alignment with the outcome I desire? And then looking at what are my beliefs what are the stories that i have been told that i've bought into because we will keep unconsciously recreating those so if you hold an unconscious belief and just side note i'm a hypnotherapist these days too because i love the power of the mind and understanding how it works and um so we're often not aware that we're actually acting on all these unconscious programs 97 percent of everything we do all day long we don't really think about it. it's all unconscious and so if we're programmed to believe that business is difficult or it's hard to generate a certain level of income we will keep making it difficult for ourselves because we need to prove ourselves right whether we like it or not so we go through this process we start with you know am i actually congruent in the way i'm approaching things with the outcome i want what are my unconscious stories and beliefs and let's start changing those so i actually help people with self-hypnosis i give them the tools and i show them how to use them so they don't need me and then we look at how they actually manage their money because i also have a finance background how they actually manage and use the money that comes in to start building up and generate that wealth so it's it's a marrying the magical with the practical and you really need to address all three if you're going to get traction and actually create change because I can show you what to do with your money but if you don't change your programming and your belief system you'll keep falling back into old habits and keep doing the things that don't really serve you like whether it's overspending or not asking for what you're worth or you know any of those sorts of things so we really take this very holistic approach in a group program where people then also have a community that supports them and obviously myself as well that's very interesting so can you talk about the hypnotherapist journey why did you decide to become a hypnotherapist and what did it take for someone to become a hypnotherapist yeah so um when i first so short version of the story is i have the engineering background but then i actually left that career and had a bit of a break where i had children and then i went through a divorce and on the end of the divorce i started a finance business and that did really really well but i got to a stage where i got sick of dealing with banks and you know all the all the red tape and i just wanted to help people and i really wanted to help especially mostly women but particularly small business owners. So I started coaching and I started coaching them, you know, on all sorts of things, including having more balance, having better systems and so on. So I brought all my tool set to that. But I found that people just weren't really doing the work. You know, they would show up every month and it'd be, did you do your homework? Did you do that thing? Did you make that change? Did you raise your prices or ask for a pay rise? Oh, no, no, they'd have all the excuses, right? And I figured that punching someone in the nose probably wasn't the right thing to do. And I really needed to look at what was causing them, you know, what was stopping them? What was getting in their way? Why were they getting in their own way? And that's what led me to um, study hypnotherapy so that I could bring those tools. And that really was a miraculous thing because when someone changes that subconscious and unconscious program and the story that they bought into, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, only wealthy people get richer and all that sort of stuff. When we let go of those stories and we realize that we can tell, we can choose our own story, you know, it, the world just opens up and suddenly all these old habits that weren't serving us aren't needed anymore. 
So it really allowed me to help my clients move forward and achieve their goals. So that's ultimately how I did it. And just, you know, you also asked about hypnotherapy. How does that work? It's an unregulated um, industry. So there's a lot of very dodgy practitioners out there. Mm -hmm. And I really just researched a whole lot and made sure that who I studied with had a really intensive, um, you know, longer program. Like we, we studied in person for about two months and there was all this pre and post work as well to do. And... Um, yeah, and then it's really about applying it. So, um, like I said earlier, I then take it and create lots of self-hypnosis practices and tools that are specific to helping people kind of change their, their money stories. Interesting. So is the idea of hypnotherapy kind of trying to get at what is your mental block that prevents you from certain things? Yeah. exactly exactly see we we all like this state of trance people there's a lot of um i guess uh urban myths and so on around hypnotherapy like people say oh can you make me cluck like a chicken if, <laughs> if you want to but that's not it's not really going to get us very far is it so it's you can't make anybody do something under hypnosis that they wouldn't naturally do that's outside their moral compass but what it's really helpful with this state of trance that we go into is actually a really natural state like if you think about it every time you're driving your car and you're thinking about you know what you have to do later and whether you've got to pick up some things from the shops and and you kind of go oh hang on I've, I've missed the last few intersections like I don't even remember going through them you were in a trance every time you're watching TV and maybe somebody's talking to you and you don't hear them, you're in a trance. So it's a very natural state. And by going into a trance state and then just guiding people to look at these um, old stories that they tell themselves, they can start to see it suddenly. You know, they can see what was in plain sight and go, oh, that's not even my story. That's my mother's story because of what she experienced as a child. And I kept being told that I took it on. Then I had a couple of things that I experienced that kind of matched it. So I really bought into it, but it's not even my story and it doesn't have to be true. And just being able to see it clearly allows you to let it go and replace it with something much more resourceful. Very interesting. Thanks for sharing. Maybe I'll look into it more. I I'm always curious about that. I've definitely seen on TV and shows and stuff of how that would work. I think there is definitely some good use case of it. And a lot of the times I think people make certain decisions in life is because of a lot of underlying, let's say, childhood experience and whatnot that they probably didn't even know. But then, you know, through that process, maybe they can uncover and then finally face the block and resolve it that way which i think is going to be very helpful for a lot of people yeah anyway. absolutely so i anytime you ask yourself why do i keep doing this even though i know it doesn't serve me mm -hmm. that's a hint that there's an unconscious um, pattern running and that will always override you know you can go so far with willpower but ultimately willpower actually works against you mm -hmm. so you know it's like when you say i'm not going to eat chocolate anymore all you can think about is eating chocolate Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you said that your clients are mainly business owners especially women business owners but you said group coaching is that the main format of how you serve your clients it it is it is the main format so these days i'm not available for one-on-one -on -one sessions anymore i offer them within my program because i really want to use my time <clears throat> as effectively to help as many people create the impact and the change they want as possible, right? Mm -hmm. And if if somebody comes to me for hypnotherapy, we can really help them move forward in leaps and bounds, but they're still not learning the tools to help themselves. So, you know, and it takes a big chunk of my time. So I realized after a while that I'm much better off, you know, creating a really great group program where people have all the tools, they learn, <clears throat> how to create that transformation and they have the support network to keep them on track. And I'm still there and people can actually book in 
for one-on-one -on -one focus coaching with me when they're part of my program. And that way I know that they're actually doing the work outside of when they meet with me rather than just coming to me hoping I fix all their problems and then, you know, over time sort of drifting off and doing whatever again. So it helps me ensure that, yeah, the, the time I spend with people one-on-one, -on -one, I'm spending it with the people who have all the tools that I know they need to um, achieve what they want to achieve. Doing these group sessions, how does it work? Is it a couple hours or you do days of immersion kind of coaching? How does that work usually? Okay, so it's it's an online, so Magnetic Money is the program that I've created and it's an online program. So there are pre-recorded modules and lessons that people can help themselves to at whatever pace they like. And there are some tutorials, there are some, you know, part of the process is putting together your own money system so that you can um, manage your money really well as it comes in. So you can have that fun money to spend and know that it's okay to go have a massage or, you know, whatever that thing is you want to do for yourself and you're not impacting your wealth creation or paying the bills. So we do all of those things, including the deeper work on the unconscious and the alignment and all of that. So that's all covered in pre-recorded modules that people can help themselves to. But then we actually go through it as a group where literally we there is a weekly live call people can jump into where we go a little deeper, we do a QA. and a um, They all have an accountability coach to help them stay on track. And also once a week they can jump on and have a little one-on-one -on -one chat with me. So we do that as an intensive twice a year and the rest of the time you know it, it's once you've been through this program once it still becomes lifelong work and every now and then somebody will jump on a call and say oh you know I've got this going on and I'll go okay jump back into module seven and just revisit that because that's the bit that you've forgotten about or that you've dropped or you know that you need to be reminded of so it kind of serves as both a long-standing support structure and then we intensively work through it twice a year as a group as well with all the, the coaching and accountability and support. So I like to try and it's it's been a long journey um, of creating something that really works well and that people can easily do because everybody has a busy life too, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Is it possible to have a high level summary of what different modules you offer? Yeah, so um, it's basically broken. I mean, there are 12 modules all up, but um, it's broken into three components. So the first one is really that energetic alignment, really looking at, am I focusing on money or the lack of money? And how do I turn that around? You know, how do I actually make sure I'm congruent with generating more income and starting to build my wealth? <laughs> then we have, pardon me, then we have uh, three, four modules that are all about shifting those unconscious stories and beliefs, uncovering them, you know, reassessing them, understanding how that explains all our money patterns that have been frustrating us and, and making the change. And then we move into the practical side of managing your money. You know, how do I actually set up my banking? How do I handle extra bonus money when it comes in? How do I actually you know, build up enough money that I can then go to a financial advisor and say, help me invest this wisely, because that's the gap that is is a, a big issue for many people. You know, they either are just trying to generate enough money to kind of get through the, you know, get through the month and maybe have some holidays and have the house paid off and so on. And then on the other end, it's you've got to have a certain amount of money that you can invest so you can have a great retirement. Well, how do you get from you know one end to the other so you can sit with your financial advisor and say what do I do with all this money right so that's really the gap we're looking to bridge and very importantly to change the way people feel about money along the way because you can have a great income and still be worried and stressed and obsessed about money you know it's that broke millionaire syndrome um, there's a story uh, there's a great book called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks and it's about growth and expansion. And he talks about having had a client who was a billionaire whose, in, whose net worth literally would fluctuate by hundreds of millions of dollars in a day. And he would argue with his wife about buying the expensive toilet paper. So it's like, what? 
you know, how can that even be? So you can have money, wealth and all of those things, but still not feel like it's enough. And that's why we throw in the hypnosis. And sorry, going back to your question, we also have two really handy modules. One is how to stop your own negative thinking. You know, sometimes we get on a little, maybe that's just me, but sometimes we get on a little negative spiral and, and some really great tools and how to handle those. And another one, that's how to handle the negative people and influences in our lives so they don't derail us. So um, mm -hmm. that's what the program covers. So it's, it's um, energetic alignment, mindset and um, unconscious beliefs and then money management there's kind of the three pillars mm -hmm. of it. yeah they sound all very helpful and exactly what business owners need but in general i think everybody would need that kind of guidance right but how do you balance that the mindset part of it and the practical side of it because i think you mentioned earlier maybe there's the magical side of it and then there's the practical side of it right mm -hmm. how do you kind of integrate them in your teaching well yeah and and that's the thing that you really need both sides and and it's an ongoing thing and you have to work on all of them more or less at once but the way I've structured the program is the easiest way to kind of get in. Because if we start feeling better about our finances, because the truth is that most people have enough money. They're just worried they don't or they're not confident they're doing the right things with it. So once you start feeling better and start focusing on the money you have rather than the money you wish you had that you don't have, that helps you then start to shift your mindset and the unconscious beliefs and stories. And then that makes it easier to actually sit down and you know sort out your banking and sort out the way you manage that flow of money as it comes in. So that's kind of the easiest way to get in, but then it is a cycle. And I've literally have a graphic of the magnetic money code and it is a cycle because as you continue to um, up level and upgrade each part, it actually boosts the others. So it gets easier and easier and you just, you know, keep moving to higher and higher levels. And it, it's a journey that never really ends. It's just that you're looking at things from a higher perspective, you know, like you might start with a five-figure income and then you get to a six-figure income and then you get to a seven-figure income. And you're still doing the same kind of work, but just through a different lens because of, of the, you know, journey you've traveled. But the things you need to focus on to keep going are the same, which is really cool because it makes it nice and easy. Sounds great. I was just thinking about some common questions that business owners might have, right? And I want to ask you how you usually help with certain scenarios. For example, usually as a small business owner, you might have the dilemma of expanding your business, which costs money, or just putting that money to build your wealth, as we were discussing earlier. So is there some practical advice you have for that kind of scenario? Absolutely. So there's a few things, like there's a few golden rules I have. And actually, this is a good time for me to plug my book, which actually covers it all. And we can put that in the show notes. So this actually shows you how to set up your whole money system and think about all those things. And there are a few golden rules where it's like, this is a system. It's not... It's not a, you know, it's not an app. It's not something you're trying to squeeze yourself and make yourself fit, but it's a philosophy and an approach and a system that will work basically for anyone, but especially for people with irregular income. And one of the things is that you should really focus on one thing at a time because you only have so many resources. And if you try and do everything at once, you go nowhere fast, right? If, and this is what people do. They might have a windfall, maybe a bit of an inheritance or something like that and they'll go okay I'll pay a little bit off the house I'll put some in savings um, I'll put some towards a holiday and I'll splurge on something and then you know you look back and you think I didn't don't really feel like I did anything significant with that money I didn't really use it to my best advantage so if you focus on one thing at a time and you can break that down into little micro goals but just one at a time it helps you really laser focus and go right tick I said I'm going to get my emergency buffer up to three months worth of living expenses or whatever it is. Tick, I've done that. Okay, next, I'm going to pay off those credit cards, but I wanted to have the emergency buffer first. So I'm going to pay off, let's say I'm going to pay off card number one first, make that my micro. Okay, tick. Next, 
I do need to grow my business. So let's, you know, put money, the, any bonus money or money I can spare towards that until I get to this stage. So you just keep shifting, but you only ever have one goal at a time. And they can be small little goals, but it allows you to kind of get that satisfaction, makes it really addictive, it makes it fun, and you can actually see yourself making progress. So it's about sitting down and going, okay, what have I got on my list? Now, what's the number one thing right now? And, you know, I mentioned emergency buffer because, in my opinion, that's the number one thing most people need. You know, yes, you want to pay off credit cards and the house and invest in all of that, but if you don't have some cash in the bank just in case, it's, you know, it's not really a great place to be. So you just decide this is my number one priority and break it down so that it doesn't drag on and on and on because... We all know what happens <laughs> if a goal drags on and on and on. We decide that, nah, I'll just go back to winging it. <laughs> um, so you make them smaller goals. You tick, tick them off and then you go, okay, now what's next on the list? You reassess and you reset. Yeah, that's great advice. It reminds me a little bit of the that snowball. I don't know if you've heard from Dave Ryan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is so the snowball, yeah. The snowball is specific to paying off debt. You know, you use the amount from the debt you've just paid off towards the next one. Absolutely. And we do exactly the same thing, but I actually get people to kind of organize their money into buckets, and each bucket has a different purpose. So we have a wealth bucket, and your wealth bucket is actually all your savings, all your investments, and all your debts. Because if you're putting, say, $300 a month towards credit cards right now, once they're paid off, you have $300 a month to put towards building wealth. And so that's about tipping the scales, right? And um, yeah, so it's it's a similar approach, I guess, but a bit more, um, not just focusing on debt, but actually focusing on how do we move towards building wealth and still help you do, you know, have a really great life along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great advice. And then the other scenario I thought about is, when you try to build your business and attract premium clients or try to charge better pricing for your service, for your worth, how do you usually go about doing that? Because that's, I got to imagine, a very difficult conversation usually with the clients. Well, it's a difficult conversation if you believe it is, right? <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to point that out to you. Yep. Um, but I actually ran a workshop about um, magnetic pricing for the Magnetic Money Club members. So when we're not busy with a live round where we move through all the core modules, I run workshops on different things. So we had a workshop on exactly this. And I talked a lot about, you know, to getting out of the mindset of charging by the hour, because that's an employee mindset where I'm buying you, I'm buying eight hours of your time every single day, and this is the money you get in return. When you're a business owner, you're not being hired by the hour. You're being hired to deliver an outcome that actually has a tangible, you know, significant value. And the truth is, if you can deliver that outcome in a shorter amount of time, it's more valuable. So, you know, if I can, uh, let's use hypnotherapy, for example. I never used to be somebody who would say, yes, I do a six-month package or a 12-month package. Because if I can deliver a great outcome in one, two or three sessions, isn't that more valuable to my client? Like we all just want results and we want to get on with our life. So it's really about changing the mindset, your own mindset and believing in yourself because the client is already there is the truth most of the time. The client wants something and it's worth a lot to them. And it's it's when we come to it with our own money stories of, oh, am I good enough? Do I have enough experience? Oh, you know, oh, that's a lot by the hour. Well, what about all the hours you spent training? What about the hours you spent thinking about that client in the shower and, you know, responding to their emails? It's so much more than that. So, yeah, that that is mainly a mindset issue. And the big thing that really helps is getting away from thinking about charging by the hour. It's more what is this result worth? And if I can deliver it faster, it's worth more. You know, we pay extra for express delivery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't pay extra to have it delivered really slowly and take a long time. Right, that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So one other thing I want to ask you about is uh, money shame. I think that's something that came up. How can business owners address and overcome 
money shame, regardless of their income levels. Just, just a little question for me there. Um, <laughs> so, so let's quickly define money shame. So when I say money shame, it's not, um, it, it doesn't relate to the level of income the person has. Money shame is something that people across all levels of income experience where they just feel like it's still not enough and um, I worry way more than anybody would ever guess. You know, like we said, the billionaire arguing about the toilet paper with his wife. Like, I'm sure that that's probably not something they tell people, or maybe they do, who knows. <laughs> but, you know, we all have these internal conversations with ourselves about, oh, I wish I had more and I should be here, but I'm still not. And, you know, how come I still have credit card debt or whatever it is? And, and so that's that, it's a real weight that we carry with us, feeling like it's not enough, we still haven't done enough, it's not good enough, and if only people knew how embarrassing that would be. And that kind of goes across all levels of income. And so that's really very little to do with how much money you have, and it's to do with the stories you tell yourself and also what you choose to focus on, which is why in Magnetic Money we start with that alignment. Like what do you actually... Um, hooking your energy into? Are you constantly looking at what's still not there, what you wish you had, you know, the client that cancelled? Or are you looking at the 10 clients you worked with that love you, that talk about you, that recommended you, that keep coming back for more, you know, or maybe that client that's been with you from the very beginning and wouldn't deal with anyone else? Why do we choose to focus on the one person that, you know, wasn't particularly nice rather than the hundreds that are out there that are really happy with our services why do we choose to focus on you know the the money that's not there yet for that big first class trip around the world we've always wanted instead of the fact that we have our own business and if we need to go to our kids sports day we can and how awesome is that so that's just habits to be quite honest that's just habits and the thing is that um, energetically it builds momentum so when you focus on something you see more of it you think about it more and this happens at literally at a brain chemistry level in terms of the neurons firing and the neural pathways laying down you know firmer and firmer like really in, getting embedded it happens at a physical level we get addicted to that feeling and it happens at this energetic level you know it, so it kind of depends what language you speak but it's all the same thing. It builds momentum and we get sucked into it and we get caught up in it. And um, and so it's about actually just changing those habits and starting to become addicted to something that's a lot more healthy for us. So that's how you get out of money shame. You start to actually celebrate the abundance you have. You start to learn to focus on the good and what is there and what is working and what is serving you. And as you do, you start to see more and more of it and you start to attract more and more. And that starts to also shift, you know, your unconscious patterns and the way you approach your money. So it all interlinks and and supports each other or it can all interlink and drag each other down. So mm -hmm. it's up to us to be proactive and um, aware. Yeah, that's really great. I really feel like I learned a lot from the conversation. So maybe two more questions for you. Do you have a book recommendation? Aside from my book, yes. Uh, yeah, you can, you <laughs> so we'll, we'll link this. Yeah. This is the five-minute money management system. And honestly, um, it it's a great simple read. I literally call it a pocket guide. You can write in it and mm -hmm. do the work as you go. So I definitely recommend if anybody who needs to get their money organized and sorted that they grab a copy. It's, it's available on Amazon. And um, the other books that I highly recommend, I love a book called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. Um, he was, he wrote another book as well, and I can't remember the name of it right now. I have it as well, but that one was like an Oprah book club uh, book, but okay. The Surrender Experiment is his personal story. And it's one of these books that is incredibly inspiring. It's his personal story and how he went from just being this hippie who just wanted to be left alone and live in the woods to running a billion dollar company and all because he was like, all right, I'm going to decide to stop struggling against life and to see where it takes me. So it's an amazing book and I read it literally, I try to make sure I read it once a year because it reminds me that 
we worry way too much. And if we just let go and go with the flow, everything's okay. Yeah. So that one I definitely recommend. I also really love The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's one of these books you can pick up and just like flick open on a random page. And he has some really good tools in there for self-awareness. And to me, you know, the, the practical money skills, you can learn those. But it's, it's really the inner work that we really need to commit to. And as we do, then we will actually do the practical work and stick with it as well. So, yeah, those two are really high on my list. Yeah, they sound like really great books. I'll definitely check them out. Last question, where can people find more about you? Okay, best place is probably my website. So just Miriam Castilla, double L's, um, mm -hmm. dot com. And there's a whole lot of free resources. There's a money habit archetype quiz to kind of help you figure out what your main habit pattern, your unconscious habit pattern around money is so that you can start looking into why is that? Like, why do I tend to hoard money and feel like it's still never enough or whatever your pattern mm -hmm. is? So that's really cool. There's also a workshop to help you start organizing your banking better. And that talks about the bucket system that I use and they're both free. So yeah, check it out. There's a few free things there that you can use. And there's also the link to the Magnetic Money um, Club, which is my my coaching program where you can actually work with me one-on-one -on -one and do the whole deal. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Miriam. This is a great conversation. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Oh,